Hi, it's Alex. Welcome back to my channel. I'm back here in the sewing room. So obviously it's a sewing chat as per. Um, thank you very much for all the great feedback from um, my tour of this room. And it seems such a small room to have a tour, but anyway, you know what I mean. Um, great comments as always. Um, and it seems like there are uh, lots of you would like me to go through my stash and my pattern. So I am gonna come back and do the um, show my stash thing. And I'm gonna have a think about how best to deal with the patterns because obviously there are quite a few, um, but I'm gonna really enjoy it. Um, slightly concerned that I'll get very distracted and end up with a massive long list of things that I want to sew. Um, but it's going to be really good fun so I will come back and do that soon. Also thank you so much a couple of people came up with a brilliant suggestion for how to deal with the two top drawers that I've got here that were unusable and they suggested that I take the drawer out and put a shelf in absolutely inspired so thank you very much for that um i mentioned it to my husband and uh, he said oh yeah yeah i was gonna do that need i say more anyway great idea so thank you very much um before i go on to talk about my new uh, dress that i've just made i will just tell you very quickly that um i am wearing this which is an ogden cami um, Lady McElroy fabric that I bought when we were away in Wales and we you know on a little short break remember when we could go on short breaks um, and I went off to see if there was a fabric shop in the local town and there was and I bet I'm not the only person that does that when they go away uh, you always kind of hope that you'll stumble across something with a few little gems that you can't get nearer to home anyway so it's a little bit old and um, I took a photograph of me wearing it which I'll put up and that kind of demonstrates why I've gone off this um, pattern because I think I said before it doesn't have any darts and it tends to swing out at the front um, and I feel like you know I don't have a particularly big bust so I can imagine with somebody with um, a large bust that's going to be even more so. So I think a darted pattern for a cami is the way to go which is why I've started using the um, nighty pattern from Stylark that I did before. And then, just very, very quickly, uh, this is the Blackwood cardigan that I was halfway through making, um, and um, it's using this really nice knit fabric from Lulu Designs that I bought. It was in the fabrics that I was wanting to use up video. Um, if I get close, you'll see why I like this so much. Hopefully that's focused properly but it is like a proper knit um i don't think anybody would ever know for one minute that it's something that you had sewn rather than well, you wouldn't knit it but yeah it doesn't look like a sewn thing so um yeah i really like this and um i also used that same variegated overlocking thread that i had used in the gray coat that i made in the winter that i stupidly left on the train uh, and it's this look it has this kind of effect um, I'll put a link below to where I got that because that I just think that looks great um, so yeah that's what I'm wearing now anyway um, I mentioned on the last video that I was going to make the new pattern from Deer and Doe which is the passive floor dress and um, I really wanted to get my teeth stuck into something new with a bit more kind of oomph to it you know didn't want to do a quick and easy one this time and this dress was absolutely perfect for that um, it comes in three variations there's a standard length and then a longer kind of maxi length which has an added tier at the bottom and then a blouse version and there's short sleeves and long sleeves and um sorry excuse me my hair i went to bed with my hair wet which is why it's a bit crazy like this but anyway so the brilliant thing about this pattern is that it's a coat style dress so it can actually be worn as either and i am very fond of a multi-use pattern 
a bit like the Cali shirt dress that I made a little while ago that I'm kind of wearing as both shirt and outer layer. Um, and this is great. It has a wrap over style with double breasted frontage and lots and lots of buttons. So no concerns about escaping boobs. Um, and it has a belt which is fastened together with um, D-rings. Although no reason why you couldn't just use a standard belt buckle. Um, and it's designed for wovens. So you've got a lot of choice of fabrics and that also gives you a lot of kind of versatility with it. So um, obviously you could go for something like a viscose um, or a crepe that's gonna be very drapey. But I wanted to focus more on its ability to be coat-like, only because I will get more wear out of it if it's uh, a layer that I'm going to throw over whatever I'm wearing, um, rather than a dress that will just sort of go into rotation in my wardrobe. I'm not that organised that I have a rotation in my wardrobe, but you know what I mean. Um, so that meant that fabric choice was going to be important. And I have been very fortunate, I was given the opportunity by Lulu Designs to choose some fabric to make this with so the fabric has been gifted to me but as you'll probably know if you've watched any of my videos I have bought lots of fabric from them because I've always been very impressed with the quality and also they have a great eye for colour which is just something that I'm enjoying right now um, so I wanted to choose something that was going to be light enough to be spring summer but have enough structure to be an outer layer and I also thought that although obviously as a dress something kind of floaty and something patterned would look amazing in this um, design and but I felt like for a coat it was probably safer to go for a plain Having said that, I do really like patterned coats or a print coat. I think they can look absolutely brilliant. So um, that is something that I might go back to doing. Um, but anyway, I had seen in my, um, or was reminded really by going through my Swatch Club box. Um, I talked about the Swatch Club that they do at Lulu Designs previously, so I'll put a thingy somewhere. Um, but I went and had a look at that and um, they do um, a linen rami which I have actually used before but the I spotted the swatch and that kind of reminded me and I thought that this would work really really well um, because it is not too heavy and not too thin so yeah like Goldilocks just right um, it's called a Rebecca and I went and had a look on the website. The Swatch Club fabrics have their own section. I mean, you know, anyone can buy this, but if you are a member of the Swatch Club, you get a discount for uh, if you buy any of the Swatch Club fabrics. So it's on a separate section on the website. And I went and had a look to see what colors it came in. And there is a massive range. Um, everything from sort of pastels to some really gorgeous, bright, sort of you know luscious um, colours so I was absolutely spoilt for choice and I was very tempted by there's a kind of ready deep ready colour that is called raspberry and I was very tempted by that which would have been quite a different colour for me um, but in the end I settled for this teal and as like everybody I'm having to get used to um, lockdown so I did remember to order my thread with the fabric as well they offer a thread matching service um, as do lots of fabric companies online or certainly the independents often do and I think that increasingly I'm going to have to try and get into the habit of doing that now that I don't have my local Abacan anymore um, and to be honest I don't know why I wasn't doing it pre-lockdown and loss of Abacan anyway because it just makes life easier. There was a bit concerned about what I was going to do about the D-rings for the belt because um, I didn't have any and obviously I can't nip out to the shops and it's the sort of thing that's quite a small bitty thing to place an online order for. Um, anyway I emailed Lulu Designs and 
asked because they do have a haberdashery section so you don't have any knocking around you've just not got around to listing have you and I hit lucky they did so another reason to stick with independent shops sometimes you send an email to see if they can help you out and if they can they will so that was great so D rings arrived with it all they were slightly larger than um, specified on the pattern so I did have to remember to increase the width hair uh, increase the width of my belt um, to accommodate it because obviously take that way around um, you know you don't want the belt belt being too skinny but I did remember to do that and also the belt loops um, but that worked all well and I, obviously I pre-washed the fabric especially need to pre-wash linen um, but to be honest I tend to pre-wash most fabric I buy now just as a precaution because um, yeah we've a lot of us have learned that lesson the wrong way haven't we and in terms of the pattern itself i have made a couple of melio shirts from deer and doe they are a french indie pattern company and their designs for me i really like them i think they're great um i've also made the plantain which is the free t-shirt pattern that they do which is also very good so i kind of cheated a little bit and thought well I trust these guys I know I've made things before and I didn't do a twirl and I also thought I could probably get away with it because um, because there are princess lines on the um, coat or on the dress there's quite a lot of opportunity for fitting because you've got those princess lines and also the side seams and they do use a um, one and a half centimeter seam allowance so you've got a bit of wriggle room there if you need to let out rather than take in. Um, I made a size 42 uh, but I graded up to the waist which is fairly standard for me I think I went up a size um, and I was very careful to baste before whizzing ahead with my overlocker and to then fit before I got to that final stage. Um, and when I came to that, I did actually take some off. I took about a centimetre and a half off from sort of waist down, um, but tapered up from the waist up to the sleeve because I didn't want to lose any of that um, armhole there. Um, and that seemed to work really well. So it all came together well. So my risk of not twirling it was all right. Now my top tip with this pattern is to follow the fabric layout guide, which I didn't do. Um, I think lots of us don't follow the fabric layout guide, do we? Because, you know, experience tells us that a lot of the time um, it uses up way more fabric than it needs to. And we've all done that thing, haven't we? Where, you know, a pattern says it needs two meters, 2.2 meters, and you think, oh, I'll squeeze it out of two, it'll be fine. Um, anyway, this time what I wanted to do was add a little bit more length onto the dress because it's above the knee and I just thought I wasn't 100% comfortable with that length. So um, I did order a little bit extra fabric to accommodate that but rather than following the plan I did it my own way and when I got to the last two pieces from the body I didn't have enough length. Um, so I actually did end up making it the exact length that the pattern specifies. Um, so I would say that, sorry, with the hair fiddling, it's just driving me a bit insane. So I would say that uh, be guided by the lay plan. This one's actually spot on um, because even though I had extra fabric, yeah, I didn't do it properly. So they know what they're doing this time. Um, and in terms of the instructions they classify it as advanced to expert and I would say that that was probably about right um, there's enough information in there and everything's very clear and you know you're told everything you need to know if you're someone that has sewn a few things like this before um, things like for example on the sleeve plackets um everything is there to do the sleeve packet which i did actually do um there is my placket um but 
if you'd not done one before it wasn't the instructions aren't kind of tutorial like they're not going to take you through every tiny little step along the way so I think it is right that it is for somebody that's got more experience um, and by the way with these sleeves I don't think that you necessarily need to have a proper placket now I like doing these yeah I'm some kind of sicko um, I like the detail of it uh, but in terms of getting your hand in and out, it's a demonstration fail. But anyway, trust me, it's absolutely not essential. My hands are slipping in and out absolutely fine. So you could cheat it and just turn it up or just do a little cuff. Um, you don't necessarily need to do this. I think that's fine. And I definitely used some of my kind of coat making techniques. So a bit of experience definitely is required. I have done a video with my top tips for making coats for kind of home sewists. So I'll put a link for that somewhere down here. Um, and the only other modification I did was, um, I was halfway through doing it and I thought, this needs pockets, why aren't there pockets? I mean, you know, regardless of it, whether you're gonna wear it more coat-like or dress-like, as sewists, we expect pockets, don't we? Thumbs up if you agree. Um, but yeah, so I couldn't quite squeeze two pockets out of it, but I did squeeze one, which I'm really pleased about, um, but it would have been nice to have thought about that before. So if you make it, yeah, just draft yourself some pockets. Um, the fabric was an absolute dream for sewing something like this because there is a fair bit of easing. Um, you've got obviously over the sleeve, um, but because it is princess line, you've got um, easing over the, where is it? Oh, there we go. Over that apex of the bust on the princess seam here. Um, and you know that can be quite fiddly and because it is there on your side it's very visible and you the last thing you want is puckers or tucks on that kind of thing um, and I don't know whether it's because I've been using slippery fabrics a lot recently have I? I don't know but this just felt like an absolute dream because um, it's just very kind of malleable isn't it linen um, obviously I pinned but it's got that great kind of quality as you put your easing where you've pinned under your sewing machine foot it just sort of disappears cotton does the same doesn't it um but anyway it's really good to use so it's fabulous um from that point of view obviously great to press and all of that i mean it's linen you're not going to expect it to be absolutely crisp the entire time that's you know Point, you choose a different fabric if that's what you want um, but it's got that lovely lovely quality to it so I really enjoyed sewing with it actually. My little gripe with this and it is a very minor gripe is that the instructions from Deer and Doe are all in Imperial and when I taught myself to sew I taught myself in metric so I don't know what two inches looks like. I have to go and look it up on my computer and yes you'd have thought I'd have learned by now but I haven't and I could also look on my tape measure sometimes I do that um, but I do think that it would be really good if the instructions just gave both imperial and metric and the only other thing because I was um, intending to wear it more coat like I did make sure to when I was overlocking the seams I overlocked them right down um, you know to standard sort of overlocking width rather than maintaining the centimetre and a half seam allowance just to make it look a little bit more um, professional because obviously when you take your coat on and off um, you're going to see inside it um, so yeah just fairly standard um, there is quite a bit of hand sewing which is not my favourite thing to do you're hand sewing the facing onto the um, inside along that seam there and um, there's also a bit of hand sewing on the collar to do but actually because um, you're just kind of yeah it's not quite tacking it down but almost um, it's not too onerous and this kind of fabric the stitches just sort of disappear anyway as they would with a pattern fabric as well of course for different reasons but yeah that was all really good um the other thing of course is look at this design there are a lot of buttonholes and um i was a little bit nervous about making quite so many visible buttonholes but actually 
it worked a dream. I think this is possibly the first time I've made something with buttonholes that I haven't had to unpick and that is saying something isn't it? So no problem with those. Um, I didn't however have the good sense to order some buttons and I just assumed that I would have some in my stash and then when I went to look I didn't. That I'm afraid enabled me to place an order because um, at Lulu Designs they had sent an email out to Swatch Club members saying that uh, they were offering a discount if you placed an order for uh, pre-orders for the new Atelier Brunette fabrics and I'm afraid that I couldn't resist so I um, bought some of the new fabric and then while I was ordering that I thought I would order have a look and see if they'd got any buttons suitable which they did and these are actually Atelier Brunette buttons as well um, but they just happen to work really well I think they are slightly smaller than the ones specified can you hopefully that will pick that up um, yeah, they're a tad smaller than the ones specified on the pattern, but I think that's fine. The only thing is, I managed to lose one. Somewhere in my sewing room, I've got a lost button. So the last button on one side is um, a grey one from my stash, you see. Um, so I'm really hoping that I, it will turn up somewhere. It's probably on the floor, that's why I'm looking down here. I'm really hoping it will turn up somewhere in the next few days. If not, I'm gonna have to um, add it next time I place an order. Um, but shall I just go off on a bit of a tangent and show you my Atelier Brunette fabric? Because it's so nice. Um, no surprises, I ordered the ochre colorway. Um, yeah, this is a viscose and it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, yeah, I mean, I know that obviously Atelier Brunette fabrics are not cheap, um, but whenever I have kind of splashed out and bought one, they are always so much nicer when you get them and feel them than they even look on the websites. So um, yeah, really pleased with that. And my plans for this are to make a blouse. I think it's called the Valley Blouse. I'll put a doodah up. But yeah, really keen to make this and I did have the good sense to also order the matching buttons. So I'm all set up for that. Um, yeah, I couldn't resist buying this. Um, but yeah, so that was my excuse to buy this fabric was to get those buttons. Not logical, I know. So overall, I am really, really happy with the finished item. Um, I think that whilst I would wear it as a dress, and by the way, having seen the photographs that I took of it in its dress form, I'm now not bothered about the length at all. And I actually think it probably works better at the length that the pattern states. Um, so yeah, they obviously know what they're doing and I don't. Uh, but yes, I think as a dress it's probably more formal than I would wear just for sort of milling around at home. I don't know, maybe everyone else leads a more glamorous lifestyle than I do. Um, but I think it will come into its own more as a kind of outer layer um, yeah, thing to throw on. And I am really pleased that I went with this teal colour. Um, it was very tempting to go for some of the other colours because there is such a really big choice but this is the one that's going to go with uh, more things that I have in my wardrobe and it is such a favourite of mine because look, you know, that does work doesn't it? Um, so go check out Lulu Designs. As I say, this is one of the Swatch Club fabrics so you do get a discount if you are a Swatch Club member but it's not you know that's just for the swatch club it's there on the general website um for everybody anyway check them out and in the meantime i am sticking to my me made may pledge i did sneak in a pair of jeans uh last week but you know one pair of jeans across how many days are we now 20 that's not too bad is it um i have really enjoyed it actually i've really enjoyed it focusing my mind and uh, getting me out of some kind of pretty boring habits of reaching for the same old things all the time. 
Um, so that's been really, really good. I will definitely be back with a show my stash. Got a real problem with that. Uh, video and talking about patterns and all the rest of it and to be honest that's i'm gonna have a little look at the patterns today and i'm gonna thoroughly enjoy doing it so if you are considering subscribing i am getting really close to that 2000 subscriber deadline deadline milestone that's the word um so that would be really good um i would really appreciate it please keep in touch i love all the comments and um also you know try to remain positive we'll get through this See you soon. Bye.